So I'm here with? Uh, Keen Barrett. From? Mulford, Donegal. Jeez. That's some trek, huh? <laughs> it's a bit of a trek now. When did you arrive? Uh, I arrived on Monday evening, and then that's my dad over there. He arrived uh, yesterday at five. So the jet lag has kind of subsided at this stage, has it? Hi, it's set in yesterday now, but it's not too bad now today. Thank God, we're I'm up and running now. So we're on the eve of the big match. First Irish team to qualify for a World Cup since 2002. How are you feeling? Ah, I suppose I'm a bit nervous now. My, my sister Amber is, uh, plays in the team, and I suppose she's been... Uh, we're, we're hoping she gets a bit of game time now, so it's just it's nerve wracking. It's a massive occasion, I suppose. It's, it's only when you're, you see the amount of Irish people out here and, and the, the build up to it, and the, the well wishes, and the texts, and people looking forward to it. You know, you see how big an occasion it is. You know, it's, it's a far cry from home, but uh, now look, we're looking forward to it as well. Really exciting, so it is. I've seen a couple of bits in the Australian media. They're kind of labelling the Irish team as a kind of very rough side. We've got a lot of football and quality in the team. Stereotypically, we do have a bit of a reputation for maybe sticking in a few agricultural tackles. But uh, how do you think the team's going to play? Um, I suppose the Irish teams in general, whether, whether it's the women's team or the men's team, you, you can have to bridge the gap, and uh, especially if you're playing opposition of, with a bit of better, better quality. So... Um, Look, you need to be physical, but there's plenty of good footballers there as well. You know, like there's like on the international stage and the professional side that uh, the Katie McCabe is as good a player as, as you'll get around. And you know, it's, it's if we can be competitive tomorrow, like I, I can see us getting a result. How do you rate their chances of getting out of the group and then maybe going beyond? I think it depends on tomorrow. I think if you can squeeze out a result against tomorrow or against uh, Australia tomorrow and. Uh, you know, and, and try and keep it tight against Canada because I know Canada are very strong. And then you'd, you'd certainly be uh, targeting the, the Nigeria game and the, the last game to try and try and get over the line there. And, and all look at that, be I'd be quietly confident. Sure, not a bad way to be. Obviously, there's a, a massive buzz back home. You know, what would be the the main thing you'd say to people that they can do to get behind Amber and get behind the girls? Just stick by them. I suppose uh, in the last couple of weeks, there's been a lot lot made in, in the media that I think is a bit unfair on, on the girls and the work that they've done to get here. I think focus on the football and focus on the, the enormity of it. Look, it's, it's 21 years since the, the men's team were last in the World Cup and it's our first ever Women's World Cup. And uh, support them to the very end, uh, win, lose or draw. Vera's army, huh? Vera's army, yeah. <laughs>